This video is sponsored by Ethos. Hey everyone, my name is Matt. Welcome to my uh, my backyard. Today we're gonna be cutting up this uh, what is this big kind of crotchy thing of uh, silver maple. So this is quite the uh, the squat piece of wood, very wide, very shortish. We're just a little under uh, eight feet long, and this thing is uh, I don't know, well over four feet wide here at the base. So we got some pretty good splay up there. This one has all kinds of figure, it looks like, in here. We got all kinds of undulation here in the outside of the uh, the bark here, or the outside of the tree under the bark. And if you come over here to where this thing has been kind of mangled, you can really see the, uh, the undulation in the curl in the wood through here. We have some uh, quilt lumps here, and some more kind of quilt lumps and undulation there. So this should be pretty good amount of figure in here. This has been sitting out for probably about two years now, so it should have a nice color shift from the stark maple white to some more reddish and blues and oranges and stuff. So there should be a lot more uh, things to look at visually with all this curl and the uh, additional color from the staining. We also have this uh, piece of wire here that uh, who knows how deep that goes. So we'll figure out what that's a uh, that's attached to when we uh, get further into the log. I think the way I'm going to cut this is there are three uh, crotches here, or two crotches, three limbs, whatever you want to say. I think this plane here is how I want to saw. These look like the, kind of the two biggest main things. That'll get us into that wire real nice. So it has some metal inclusion hopefully running through the slab. And then, uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. So I'm going to... Rotate this a little bit, about 45 degrees here uh, clockwise, and then we should be able to set up for the first cut. A little wide, but I think that's where it's gonna be. All right, let's see here. Okay. Let's see here, we got this thing. Ugh. Okay. Set up a little guide here. A couple inches. See what we got going on here. We got some uh, fun stain spalt stuff going on here. 
I see what this burl thing's doing and this wire. I heard the wire as she clipped it. Didn't sound like much though. It just sound like a wire. <laughs> there it is. One little tiny piece of wire. Maybe we'll find what it's connected to. Maybe it's connected to something cool. Holy crap. Let's take a little closer look here. Oh, this is gonna be nice, I think. Just based purely off of this. Yeah, that's all, that's all figure. All that, all curl and kind of some quilt figure through here and over here. And that's that like quilt bump lump thing. And then the spalt. So this is, this is gonna be a good one. Yeah, you can see, all, look at all the ripples over here at the water now. You can see them even better. All right, let's get this out of the way. Maybe. Okay. So this looks like a uh, pretty, uh, oh, I got wet. Oh my goodness. Whoa, whoa. I guess that worked. Holy hell, look at this thing. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, don't, I got no words here. That's all 100% curly figure and quilt all the way through here, all the way across to some burls. And you got some spalting. That's just kind of spalted, but this situation here, bananas. It's quilted. Quilted maple is what we got there. So that last cut was a little bit weird. The saw was like gyrating a little bit and I am getting a little bit of walking with the blade here. So I have, either this is a dip or I have a little rise here, but I'm out at least, well, maybe about an eighth of an inch here as far as flatness goes. So I think it's gonna be time to change that blade. It's missing several teeth. So I think it's probably time to do that now. So let's, uh, let's run through a blade change real quick. Okay, before I pull this off of here, let's take a look and see if there are any teeth left. Because <laughs> looking at this now, there's not much here. There's a little tiny bit of a tooth there. There's a tiny bit left here and here, but there's no carbide left on most of these. And if you kind of go through, I'm looking for a full tooth. I haven't really found one. I'm actually surprised this thing is still cutting as well as it is. Because it has... There we go, some teeth. There's some teeth right here. So, I don't know what that was, like six feet of the blade had no teeth. This is missing a few here and there. So that makes sense. That's that like cyclical thunk, thunk, thunk motion as this blade's coming through, dragging a whole section with no teeth. And then the teeth that are actually there suddenly engage. So I think this one is, uh, this one's probably done now. Oh, delicious. All right, 26 feet long. Let's coil it up. Let's see if I can still do this, it's been a while. Yeah. Is 
this will go in the pile of old blades. So these blades, because they're carbide, they got you know, the braised on teeth. They're a little delicate, so they come with the uh, plastic guard on them here. I got a little water in there. It's got a little wet sitting in the barn for three years. Another question I've gotten over the years is if I have to like adjust the tracking every time I put a new blade on and you don't because all the blades are identical. They all just go exactly back to the same position. That's the nice thing about having a saw that uses the same blade every time. You set it up once. In my case, I set it up when I make this thing, 2016 or whatever, and I, I haven't touched it. Holy hell. Aha. <laughs> uh Aha. -huh. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Yeah, I, I don't know. I just figure city land. Holy crap. While I'm making the next few cuts on this log, let's talk life insurance. As our family has grown and become more established, something Lindsay and myself have had to think about is what would happen if either of us was suddenly gone. That led us to look at a life insurance policy which can provide income replacement should something happen to either of us. I found this company called Ethos which makes buying life insurance super easy. Traditionally, buying life insurance has been time consuming, complicated, and confusing. Ethos, on the other hand, focuses on creating a seamless and convenient customer experience with a completely online application process. By limiting medical exams and blood tests, Ethos is able to help people get coverage in minutes instead of weeks. There's just a few health questions to answer. It's quick, easy, painless, and 10 minutes can protect your family for as little as $10 a month. The sooner you buy life insurance, the more affordable it's going to be. According to Investopedia, you can expect to pay an average of 8 to 10% more each year you wait to buy life insurance, with that number increasing to 9 to 12% more each year after you turn 50. You can get your own personalized free quote by clicking my link down below. Thanks Ethos for sponsoring this video.
Hey, is the bucket match the shirt? Okay. Now, one question we get a lot is why we'd splash the water? Because you can't see the depth of the figure if this was dry. Like, that just instantly came alive and showed you all the crazy stuff that's going on in here. This side is ridiculous. We got all this kind of burl and we're getting a little bit of crotch figure starting to show up on this one. Look at all these little burls and we got our little wire thing in here. And then the bottom is spalted and whatever this was, that's a good sized chunk of metal. I don't know what that is, it's pretty thick. Like a bolt, maybe? I don't know. Cut right through it. Ain't no problem. Oh, look at it. I even see this. Look at all the curl down here. Oh, a compression figure. All right, let's see if I can get some uh, loft on this guy. <laughs> I think just the water, not the bucket. Oh yeah, now we're getting, yeah, that's some actual crotch figure. And I'm just gonna call it banana figure because it's just bananas. And even over there, he's got all kinds of weird figurey things going on. I'm kind of partially speechless. A lot of metal in this guy though. Okay, let's see if this gets any better or worse. Um, different. I don't know if better, but different. More crotch. A lot more crotch and some weird like, I don't know, like splotchy figure. It's just different. Over here has got like a lot, a lot of stuff going on. It's, this one's like, this log is hard to like tell depending on where you're at visually with the light and everything. Cause from up top, it doesn't look like there's any figure down there, but when you get down there, it's just a lot. We got some uh, old rot pocket bar conclusion thing here. And this giant rot pocket with a pretty large cross section of something metal there. Maybe like an eye bolt or Something bent around itself or something. I don't know. A lot of nice crotch figures though. All right, let's see what's on this guy. It's so big you need two buckets. This is a wild. I don't know what's going on here. Some kind of like burls and, I don't know, swirly 
things and bar conclusions. And if you look here now, we're like, that metal inclusion has turned into cable. You can see all the individual strands of some cable here. On this one here, and then there's some more over on this side here. And our wire is doubled up here. And then we got a heck of a crotch feather up there. And all this. <laughs> that enough figure for you? Or you want some more? Turn up the dials. Now right, for some measurements, let's see what we got here. Down here at the narrowest is 45 inches. Let's see what we got here in the middle. 55. And then across here, 69, 70 inches, something like that. You know, the same thing. That's, that is a lot of wood. Yeah, we're over five feet wide. This is a big piece of wood. Uh, good morning, everyone. Ran out of time yesterday, Friday afternoon, so happy Saturday. We're gonna just kind of step through this here and admire some gorgeous wood. Or at least I assume the rest is gonna be as gorgeous as the, uh, the stuff we already cut. It's a beautiful day today. Yesterday was kind of cold. Today is nice, bright, sunny, and warm. Let's see what's going on today. Yeah, it's a beautiful day, beautiful wood. I don't know, that seems like a perfect day to me. Holy jeez. This thing is, uh, this is ridiculous. Look at all this crazy figure here from the crotch. And it's like misaligned too. There's two crotches here. There's this crotch on this side. And there's this one over here, this bar conclusion. It's also a crotch. Just all kinds of crazy figuring and this this is all figure and ridiculous. There's our little wire. There's a few over there on that side. Looks like some more cables. Look at the color. Color and figure and integrated <laughs> steel cable. I love this look with the steel cable in there. Like a little flower. This is cool. And then we got some figure on top of this old limb. 
You can see this old limb that had died back at some point and the tree grew around it and encapsulated it. Man, this the figure on that side right over there. That's all just curl and compression figure all over there. Okay, let's see what's going on here. It's like more metal than this one, or significantly more metal than the last ones. Look at all that. All curly figurey stuff. It is, that's a lot of figure. Look at all this. Through the spalt lines. What we got going on here? We got some uh, bigger chunks of steel and other assorted things there. There's some like staining here, like blue stain from metal, but I don't see anything there. This is just crazy. The bottom is bark inclusion where it's all this swirly grain and stuff. <laughs> Look at that big old crotch figure right there. It's crazy. As I was cutting this thing yesterday, I was just kind of laughing to myself. Uh, 45 down here. 54. And then kind of coming through here. We're at like 67 wide and then we're at like six feet to actually capture the full width of the slab. Anyway, I was laughing about, uh, as I was sawing yesterday, I was laughing because I just, like when you're on there, we have this, this log on the saw and it's so big and like you're standing there, you're cranking it through and there's just wood all the way through. And in the case, when I got to the bottom cut, like there's wood all the way up to the throat. And you're like, I'm sitting there thinking, you know, some woodworker designed and built this thing in his driveway. And now it cuts, and it cuts this without a problem. I'm usually pretty humble, but today I feel like bragging, I guess. Okay, this looks like it's got even more crazy figure. Yeah, like whatever this is through here, it's like, I don't know. I don't know. It, I'll show you. It's crazy. It's just like this crazy ripply curly stuff. There is some kind of burl thing going on here. There's some little baby burls right there with a little tiny piece of embedded metal there. And this like string of pearls kind of thing. <laughs> That's the best way I can describe it. But I think other than that one little piece of wire there, or nail or whatever, I think we're through all the metal inclusion. Holy, look at this. This is bananas. Even more bananas. <laughs> There's still a lot of figure in here, but it's a lot less than the other ones. Yep, never mind. That's the way I'm looking at it. From this side, we got a little bit of the crotch figure left and some crazy grain and stuff and curl. And it's just all. This pathway here is just all curl and figure going across the slab that way. Yeah, look at the ripples. You can see the ripples in the in the spot lines as they're undulating along. That's all of the undulating grain is creating all the figure that runs all the way across the slab. Banana land. Let's see what's going on. Oh, I can, I can see it like in the sun right now. <laughs> oh yeah, that's, uh, that's a lot of figure. This again, from this, this crotch limb thing here down through this path to this side of the tree, must've been some crazy, I don't know, compression or something from that one limb there that just came across the whole tree down to this side, because it's just a solid band of just craziness straight through here. Look at that, look at that 3D figure. <laughs> this is crazy, look at this. Okay, here's the remainder. Uh, yeah, that's not gonna go in the waste pile. <laughs> I'm gonna roll this thing over, we'll be able to get one uh, wide enough slab for the base of my stack 
and then I will just probably saw whatever's left just to have maximum yield out of this thing because I'm sure this figure is going to go all the way to the outside of the log. Let's take a look at the uh, this guy. Holy crap! Yep, <laughs> it's just like curly and quilted. You start getting some of the crazier stuff towards the outside of the log on this figured stuff because it's gonna be plain sawn. That intersects the curl just nicely on the surface, and you have even more insanity with the figure. So this is almost like I don't know what this is. Well, it's quilted. I know that much, but. You got even, I can't describe it. It's wavy and crazy and crazy and weird. And there's figure and burls <laughs> and, uh, you know, the fun discoloration from the, yeah, the spalt stain and everything. Just kind of ridiculous. And real quick, let me look at this. You can really see like on the outside of the tree, all the undulation there and figure. This one, you still got some pretty good amount of figure, you know, in the surface here. And then this side's got all these fun little micro burl things there. So those are the last two. <laughs> I guess I get stacking now. So uh, I don't have a whole lot to say about this thing. This is definitely one of the ones that surprised me quite a bit. I wasn't expecting quite the level of figure we saw in here. I figured we have you know, some fun splashes of figure here and there. But as far as like the amount of figure in this thing, this is the most figure of any log I've ever cut. I had a similar silver maple log like this a few years ago. And the, like the last cut that came off of there had that crazy quilted kind of thing going on. The rest of it was just, it was just kind of crotch feather and stuff. But that last one just had all the quilt. This one had that quilt running like all the way through it. So absolutely incredible log with some uh, kind of fun metal inclusion. So that's uh, that is this one. I don't know if we're ever, we're ever gonna see a log like this again, but uh, hopefully we will because these silver maples are just kind of uh, junk logs for most people. So I mean, maybe that's why I like them. I like junky stuff. <laughs> so that's gonna do it for this one. Thank you as always for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments on this behemoth of a figury mess, please feel free to leave me a comment. As always, I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. And until next time, <laughs> happy woodworking.